Welcome everybody. Welcome to this uh, to this virtual session on the challenging challenges of study studying abroad. Um, this contribution to the week of the international student um, has been set up by ISO, LSB and uh, Dutch worldwide students. Um, and we're happy to have you all here together with uh, our expert uh, invited, especially for this session, Tineke, Tineke van der Gaast from the Rotterdam Business School. Before we start, there's a technical um, description elaboration by Sabrina in the chat, which I wish you review before we start. And then I would like the guests in the panel to introduce themselves. And I'd like to start with, well, Tineke. Tineke, I already mentioned you. Please. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you online. My name is Tineke van der Gaas. I'm working at Rotterdam Business School, which is part of the University of Applied Sciences. And I'm a head of international relations. And besides that, I'm also teaching Dutch culture and intercultural competence. I'm supervising some uh, internship students at the moment. And I'm in a research group um, into uh, 21st century skills from the students' perspective. Thank you. Back to you, Leo. Cool, thanks. Um, all right, now Rewert. Re yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Rurt. Uh, I'm a second year um, philosophy, politics and economics student at the London School of Economics. Um, and I'm also uh, a board member of Dutch Students Abroad, as you've mentioned. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, excited to be here. Nice, nice. And then we have a third guest, Samuel, please. Yeah, hello, my name is Samuel Ajekum. Um, I'm from Ghana, where I study MSc Urban Environmental Management at Wageningen University and Research, and I'm in my first year. Nice, nice. I'm happy to have you all here. Um, and we decided to discuss a little bit on, well, the challenges of study, studying abroad. But before we get there, Corona has disrupted a lot of the processes. So maybe let's let's reflect on that that a little bit first. So. How has Corona impacted uh, the nature of your time abroad or and your, your work in general? Uh, Samuel, can I give you the first word on that? No problem. Yeah, um, yeah, for the Corona situation has really turned things around and it changed things uh, from the way things to go. Um, I, I can cite examples of the way we have our group studies and group assignments. Uh, we really uh, face a lot of challenges doing our group assignments online. Uh, for instance, there are a lot of disruptions, interruptions. You don't know who is speaking here and there. And of course, uh, we can't always trust the internet. And sometimes the internet also affects the meeting disrupt the meeting in a way and so we don't i i for instance i don't get the smooth uh, meetings online all the time mm -hmm. so the aspect of meeting as a group online is really problematic and the situation is even worse when we are a lot of people online if the group is more than five then it's really really difficult to i mean set a target or meet an agenda on um, in our group meetings, yeah. Yeah, yeah I totally understand. Um, what about you, Robert? Um, yeah, I personally on the academic side quite lucky since I still have all my teaching uh, in real life. So the lectures would be online, but then my seminars are still um, on campus, which is very rare. Also, the universities around me uh, don't really do that. So I'm personally quite lucky with the academic side of it. However, it is quite uh, limiting uh, to go abroad. You want to. Um, uh, like delve yourself into the place uh, mm -hmm. and then not being able to go out of course uh, can be quite limiting but I have three more years here left so I'm not I, I'm one of the lucky ones I'd, I'd say yeah and is, is that a general uh, rule on the London School of Economics yeah yeah but then the universities the other universities in London like UCL Imperial and King's um, mostly are online um, so it is really quite unique that our university takes this approach. Hmm. 
Hmm. Nice. And and Tineke, of course, your work has also shifted around a lot because of the the COVID crisis, and you see students coming in uh, to Rotterdam with a totally different um, well situation and attitude. How how did that change? Well, yes, indeed, it uh, changed a lot. It all started actually on in, in the weekend of 14 March when we decided to call back all, all our students. And then we had to look for alternatives, of course, uh, but also calling back the students. We have many international students. So there was a situation where I had a student from Poland who was in Bangkok and she needed to go back to Warsaw. But Poland had already closed their borders. Um, she could only fly from uh, Phuket with a lot, the Polish national airline, but then she couldn't get on that flight, etc., etc. So, um, yes, it was calling back the students, then the leniency scheme. Uh, then, of course, we had incoming students who just arrived in February when we started the spring semester. We had to make sure that they still felt comfortable that they all had a general practitioner because nobody knew at that moment how how serious it was. And um, yeah, we, we switched to online teaching also overnight like everyone. And that's a new challenge. And it brought something good as well because the lecturers had to rethink their didactics and they had to rethink and, and redesign their courses to make sure that meet the learning objectives. Um, yes, and that's only a few of the things that changed indeed. For this semester, we don't have any incoming and outgoing students, mm. but for the spring semester, we are uh, looking into the situation again right now. Yeah, yeah, and, and do you already have some, some information on how these preparations are going? Are you planning on getting uh, international students into your digital um, education provision? Yes, but that's not the ideal situation because then you talk about uh, online exchange, but I rather uh, uh, would develop now the virtual exchange where students from different universities work to get together in a module mm -hmm. and not as much come for a whole exchange program online but there, that there is cooperation between uh, students and lecturers from certain universities. Yeah, and, and do, do you feel like there's the support from the academic staff to, to take this up and the, the room to do well, so? Well, that's, that's another challenge because everyone is still um, trying to get everything up and running for now. We have many more students at this moment because we couldn't send anyone out. Mm. So, um, in terms of numbers of students, it's already a big challenge and uh, that is going to happen again for the spring semester. So, yes, for this virtual exchange, as I described it, I need to be a bit more patient because we have to be realistic at, at, uh, as well. And, and, of course, some of my colleagues, they have uh, small children, so they are combining taking care of the children uh, together with working from home. Mm -hmm. Others have teenagers uh, uh, at home as well. Yeah. So that's also a challenge. So we have to take into account what everyone is able to do. And of course, we have many beautiful ideas, but we have to be realistic as well. Yeah, yeah. it remains a really complicated situation. Yeah, sounds like that for sure. Now, like with this hustle, of that the corona crisis established in the back of our mind. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to hear about what with what goals you actually went abroad and how um, like how you see it, it manifesting right now. Maybe Ruard, can you can you give us a first reflection on that? Um, yeah, sure. Why I think I left to go abroad is to kind of see more of the world. Um, it, 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 and studying at a university which is as international as mine is a, just a great plateau to do so um, and combine that with the quality of education 
So um, Dutch universities are of amazing quality, uh, but just by the way of the Engl how the English and the US system work, um, there is uh, a lot to gain from going to university. Yeah. Mm. So I, there was a lot of sound just now on the on the background, but what I got from it was one uh, getting to know a place abroad mm -hmm. outside of the Netherlands, getting to know that culture and the quality of the education provided by the London Business School, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, London School of Economics, but yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. sorry. Um, and how about you, Samuel? You went all the way to the Netherlands, that's a long trip. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I have a lifelong goal to contribute to my country's development through uh, the impact of research and knowledge transfer and currently we are Ghana as a country is looking forward to uh, improve a lot in terms of their path to sustainability and uh, I found out that um, I mean Bahrain University is really good at sustainable development and I mean things related to sustainability and so I decided to come here anyway even though I mean, there were a lot of uncertainties whether I can come to the Netherlands and other stuff. But it, I think it's my goal that um, uh, um, uh, drove my initiative to come to the Netherlands this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these these are very nice goals that you describe, and 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 they they are very focused on the the classroom environment and the the content that you actually are taught. Over the course of your your uh, your, your uh, studies, um, and you were mentioned the getting to know another country, and that's more in the personal realm. Now, Samuel, did you also have uh, a goal of personal development of of when when coming to the Netherlands? Yes, I did um, because uh, I I'm a youth leader. I am a leader of a youth group that. Uh, we actually organize them, also teach them little things about sustainability here and there. And for me, I anticipated that through presentations throughout my master's course and other stuff would build my competency to be a good leader to the group that I have back home. And of course, uh, I, I can say that with, with the few months I've been here, I've been of so much my group back home through some online discussions I have with them. So personally, it has improved my leadership skills as a research director of that youth group. Yeah. Nice, nice. And so, Rupert, back to you. Do, do you feel like um, the, the goals you mentioned of the quality of education, um, do, do you feel like, of course, you can't compare one on one, but do you feel like like also with the Corona uh, developments, do you feel like that goal has been met? And do you have an example of how the quality in London is, is really great? Um, yeah, of, co of course, Corona has made it more challenging to, to see that quite evidently, but uh, you do still notice it. It's just in the, um, the way the education is set up. So it's very intensive education for uh, approximately 11 weeks and then you have a, a very long break and then you can take working and then you have exam exams after that um, and what you notice is that even with this going on it, it's very flexible but you're still able to meet up with your uh, academics as frequently as you'd like to um, you're you're still in classrooms of six six to ten people so it's very personal teaching mm -hmm. um, and the thing I've noticed most about what I think what the quality of my university offers is um, its active approach in engaging students in material which very much relates to the degrees but is very much outside of that and that's done by societies and clubs um, but also by the university itself uh, through organizing speaker events and then um, stimulating engagement by the student population. Yeah so so it also sounds like they're they're proactive uh, reach out to the students is also kind of a facilitation for you as an international student coming there, not having a lot of um, options to to really extend your social circle. They have a lot of proactive events to to and 
And just to touch upon that, the opportunities like go outside your circle, indeed coming as an international, not knowing anyone here, is it's not, so it's the university itself and it's academic, but mostly by the way living is organized. So in first year, you're all located within halls. Myself was in the intercollegiate halls, that also meant students from other universities. Uh, and you're living with them for a year, um, which means you really have the opportunity to get these people, to know these people really well. Mm -hmm. And then throughout your studies, uh, become friends with them. And that's another uh, example of them being proactive in on the social element of it. Nice, nice. It makes it makes university more of a place of a community instead yeah. of just just learning and teaching. Definitely. Samuel, how do you how do you experience well that aspect, but then at Wageningen? Yeah, um, I think that even in the Corona crisis, um, the university did well. Though Idealis, like the housing company that is in charge of housing for international students, uh, give priority to people from afar, like where I come from. But I think this year they were a bit more um, straight on that because they gave those of us from afar uh, a lot of opportunity to get uh, rooms close to the university. And I, for instance, I was fortunate, I mean, uh, the hallway with uh, seven other Dutch students and uh, aside academic uh, staff, I've also been able to build some social relations with people here, with uh, I think the Dutch people, and I'm learning a lot of Dutch stuff, not really from my university curriculum or something, but from um, the students I have in my hallway. So I think that the way um, accommodation was structured for myself and other international students, especially from Africa, has helped build our social relationship with other people. Nice. And now, now I'm curious to hear more from the from the side of the staff and the people who have to organize all these events from the university side. And Tinika, how, how do you reflect on these stories by these two students? Yeah, well, it, it's always a challenge um, in, 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 in Dutch culture to integrate international students with Dutch students because the Dutch culture is quite individualistic. So um, we are already thinking about that for a long time and we set up a buddy system, for example. Um, also during in the University of Applied Sciences, there's a lot of group work and, and uh, I asked the lecturers also to make sure that uh, the teams are uh, from different cultural backgrounds and to make sure that they uh, really work together and not do it the Dutch way where they divide the work, everyone is doing it at home, bringing it back together because international students are much more used to really working together and have discussions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, also, what um, uh, we organized for uh, international students uh, is a morning ritual in which they had a chance to meet uh, twice a week at 10 o'clock in the morning and they could set objectives together just to make sure because yes everyone was in their own room and and trying to study of course but that was quite a challenge in the spring semester when we were just in this situation so with this morning ritual, we created some kind of, of structure for the students and, and then they had to come back to those objectives uh, they set themselves and the goals they set themselves also in the next meeting. Um, but yes, it is important also to inform Dutch students about how it is for international students. And when they go on exchange or internship abroad themselves, then they understand it. But in the first years, they do not always understand that. And um, so therefore, um, this has really our attention. And uh, it's also, you know, it's so nice to, to uh, ask international students about their experiences, etc. And what we did in the introduction week this year, because not all international students came to the Netherlands. So we asked the students that were here to make a video, but also to, to uh, we asked the international students who were in their home country 
to make a video of their surroundings, to share it with each other, to show the highlights of the, of the place uh, where everyone was li living. So that's a new way also of of trying to integrate them with each other. Yeah. And that was win-win for both, you know, because the Dutch students learned a bit about other cities in the world and the other way around. It, it's, it's still kind of the personal touch. Yes, it is definitely. Digital environment. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And thank you for, for these reflections. I think it's a, it's a really interesting topic to keep talking on. Um, but there are also, are also a few questions in the chat and uh, posed by people. I see Jeroen has his hand up, uh, but I want to go to the uh, question by Merlijn first. Um, if you if you would like to unmute yourself and post your question uh, to us directly, that'd be nice. Um, hi. Yeah, well, um, I was wondering if, uh, I don't know if that applies to the students who are currently um, here, um, but for those students who have online education only or mostly, I was wondering if they also see the advantages of online teaching. So maybe we can also use um, use it for the future. Any first thoughts, Robert, Samuel? Okay, I'll say that um, well, there, there are a bit of advantages with online teaching. For instance, um, the academic year began before I came to the Netherlands and, you know, I was back home then and I was thinking how to perfectly follow classes because the academic year had already started and there is not going to be any kind of a compensation for maybe having hitches with network and other stuff. But, you know, I was able to follow classes back home, my classes back home. I was able to follow group assignments back home. And of course, I was also able to have um, tutorials also back home. So on that side, I would say it was really, really, really helpful. And this is also a time that we are not so much um, um, confident going out because of COVID, because you have to also think about your safety. Safety matters. And um, mm -hmm. in this time, that safety is something that is prioritized over meeting someone individual in a class. Then the online education was the best solution. So for, for me, uh, for now, the online education has really been helpful to me because now it guarantees my safety while studying abroad. Even when Corona cried, the cases goes higher. I'm still, I'm not so much better because I can still stay home and follow my classes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And and Robert, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, well, I just I agree at the right point. Indeed, uh, I I think for instance my lectures are mostly online. Um, and that opens up time for me to work on extracurriculars and other projects. Um, and I do think it's pointless to sit in a lecture room with uh, one professor speaking to 400 students. I think moving that online opens stuff up. So indeed, it's all about creating opportunity and freedom from um, not a student not having to be somewhere in a certain time and place. So, so you can focus on your board year at Dutch Students Abroad, for example. Exactly. Nice. Nice. Then we have a next question by by Ilze. Um, same procedure. Could you unmute yourself and and pose us your question? Yes, thank you. Um, I was wondering. I work for a university, and uh, Riewert mentioned that there were some events organized for internationals to make them more comfortable, and we are really looking for ways how to support our internationals. So I was wondering. What kind of events are organized by the university? Um, so um, I'd, I'd say it's not specifically for international students. Um, the, it, it's for uh, basically um, because everyone is in essence uh, English speaking. So I, I also have the feeling that contrast between international and domestic student is less severe here than it is in the Netherlands. Um, but what, what the university actively did was, um, for instance, set up speaker events. They got some of the academics in from multiple disciplines, um, invite students from multiple departments over, and then and then um, so kind of making it making it something academically worthwhile. And at the end, then uh, organized just a, a drink social. So they were like everyone 
um, and then people went up in breakout rooms uh, and were able to meet other people from the same department, uh, from different departments, and you were able to like switch rooms uh, throughout your computer. And that was quite fun. So it's a very extensive digital exposition of, uh, of a drink with all kinds of virtual tables that you can join. Virtual tables, yeah, exactly. All right. But I must add, it is challenging for for all universities. Um, what I'm, I'm so I'm a second year, which means most of my social group stems from last year. Um, what, what I am hearing from the first years now, it is that they are struggling to. It is just very difficult to make online. So online can can work really well, and it's about opening up space, but it's just really difficult to form a connection through it. Um, so it is a challenge for every institution, I think. Yeah, Ilse, did you wish to add something? No, no, just I want to say thanks. <laughs> All right. Uh, Samuel, do you, do you have any specific example of, of an event that was organized in extension of? Well, I think uh, in the ID, there were also online gaming platforms that were set. So uh, even though we were in our home countries, but we could meet on the same platform and engage ourselves in a specific games but i was not really active in that but uh, i think that also helped because I, after the program a lot of people showed um, their happiness about that because they were alone in their homes in their various countries somewhere somewhere in asia somewhere in africa but they could still connect with other people in a fun way yeah and and a platform like that would be discord for example or slack all right yeah nice um, then we'll, we'll get to Jeroen. I mentioned that you at the beginning. Uh, could you unmute yourself and, and pose your question to us? Jeroen? Going once, going twice. I still have a question that I'd like to ask the people. All right. Um, so then we'll just move to our next question because I'm I'm really curious. So so we we just talked about these activities, right? And these uh, events that were organized by people or by the university to to connect. And this connection is something that's that's kind of odd in these times. Now, I just want to hear from from all of you. Did you have in in the past half year? Did you have a moment where you were like I connected with this person. I connected with this different, different perspective, um, really on a personal level. Even though we were in these difficult times, and could you give us some a bit of that context? Viewer, so meet, meeting purely online. Well, within the Corona measures. Within the Corona measures. Okay. Um... Well, yeah. So I'd say I'm living here with uh, with. I, I'm, I'm, so last year I was in halls. So that's you live in this kind of student accommodation, and then in second year everyone moves out and gets their own flat or apartment. Um, and I'm right now living with four uh, four British guys actually, um, which means it's quite. Um, you're really connecting with them because there's not much to do. So we spend a lot of time together, mm -hmm. and that might actually be one of the best ways to, to in, integrate within a community because I am truly almost 10 hours a day witnessing them, being with them, um, nearly having to kill them. No, but um, <laughs> just I'm constantly being around them, which adds a lot of value for me to kind of feel at home in this country. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a connection, but not someone new, I'd say. Necessarily. And, and, and Tineke, maybe it's a weird question to ask you, but, but what about your connection with, with the students? No, it's not weird at all. And and um, I always try to have good connections with my students. That's what makes my work uh, worthwhile. And what I do right now, I, I for example, supervise six internship students, uh, of whom two are international, doing their internship online in the Netherlands. And I have monthly uh, meetings with them on Friday afternoon from four till five. And of course, I can give them some general tips on, on and feedback. 
but it's also for them to get to know each other better and um, also for me uh, to, to, to get to know them, but they also get to know me. And what I also do in my, my lectures is that I make a longer introduction of myself, of my career path. Because I've been in Indonesia for three years and by um, exposing your own vulnerability, I, I can understand that students open up to me because they see that I do it. So it, I actually invite them indirectly also to do that themselves. And I'm, I, I always have a listening ear. I, I can be quite strict in, in my, my lecturing and supervising. But I always explain to my students that if you explain me your context, then I have a lot of understanding. If you just don't show up, then I don't have any understanding. But if you explain why, then of course, I, and we can find a way out. So th I think that's really, really important. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, all right, I, I see the chat has a lot of people that indicate they have to leave. That's that's really a shame. Um, so I'll round it off right now. Um, one thing I wanted to point out was a very interesting question by Ursula that we didn't get to, uh, and she also left. But do uh, check out her comment. It's on uh, the prospect of more virtual work in the future and a suggestion she has, namely fast friends, um, and she can elaborate on that concept uh, when you get in touch via LinkedIn. It's an open invitation. Definitely check it out. Um, I think that that's a nice nice thing to discuss about. Um, then as a last point, I'd like to uh, point you towards the chat once again. Um, Sabrina put a little evaluation form in there, which we wish you fill in for us. And that would be my last uh yeah how you say that announcement i'd say and then i want to thank you all very much for being here especially the speakers tineke thank, thank you very much for joining us Rewert from london and samuel from wageningen um thank you all so much and thank you sabrina for facilitating this this cool event in my opinion all right thank you very much and have a nice day bye -bye. my pleasure bye bye <laughs> Thank you.